Hey, this is Isar with UX in Motion, and I'm going to show you how to jelly your stroke in After Effects. Okay, so I'm going to talk, be talking a little quiet in this tutorial. I'm in an office. I don't want to disturb people. I'm wearing these uh, headphones so I can use the microphone because mine's at home. Uh, but I just really wanted to show you this technique. I think it's awesome. Um, it's such a better way of setting up a jelly uh, um, effect and animation um, than with the previous tutorial that I, I created for you, which is still pretty solid. This one's just a little bit different and I think a little bit sort of smarter. So I'm going to show you how to set this up and I'll show you why um, the, this is a little bit better. So here's the render we're going to be doing. Um, and you can see that it's, it's cool. Like we have an actual stroke we can see through the background. Um, there's not a whole lot of like pre-comping going on in this at all. Um, it's just um, added some extra layers here, but you don't need to worry about that. But it's really just fundamentally just this one shape layer um, that is doing all the work and ha having this cool jelly effect. Um, so I think it's great because adding a stroke is a totally different sort of interesting thing you can do um, with your project. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So, um, oh, I should quickly say too that I've created, I always forget, I've uh, created some um, After Effects tutorials for UX and UI, uh, UI designers, go to my site UX in Motion. I'll include the link in the description. Um, all kinds of really, really cool stuff um, for your projects. So go ahead, check that out. Um, don't forget to follow the subscribe thing on YouTube. I don't really know. And, oh, if you want to download the source files, um, you can click here in the video somehow. I don't know. <laughs> You can click the thing and you can download the source files uh, and follow along and see how I set up the project. Okay, cool. Let's get started with this beast. So I'm going to zero out um, and uh, so we have a blank canvas and I'm just going to import a background and the reason I'm doing that is because um, this is a sort of a limitation of the other uh, workflow and I'll show you what that looks like really quick. So the other limitation of the workflow was basically if you wanted to do it, I'll just do it real quick and just kind of um, show you how it's done. So I'm just going to draw a couple quick shapes here, right? And duplicate that. So we have a couple shapes here. Okay, so I have two shapes. There's like two layers, right? Now what I would do in the past is I'd create a new adjustment layer for these two shapes, and then I apply a blur and the matte choker. What that would do is it would apply it to the bottom layer as well, so you'd have to pre-comp the whole thing. If this makes no sense to you, watch the other uh, tutorial. Um, but that was kind of the limitation, and I like setting things up a little bit better for UX work, UI workflows. So um, I really thought about this, and I thought we could do a better job of it. So here's kind of my solution, what I'm proposing. So first of all, I'm just going to make a background solid just to add some contrast. Command Y on the keyboard. And uh, we'll make it like 70%, so it's a little bit grayed out. And we can just lock these two layers for the heck of it. Why not? Okay, so now I'm going to make, I'm just going to draw a shape here in After Effects. And if you hold down uh, Command and Shift, it draws a circle, a constrained circle. Um, make sure no other layers are selected or it will just draw a mask for you, which is not what we want right now. It always puts the anchor point in the middle of the canvas, so if you hit Y on the keyboard, you can click and drag that to the middle. I just like to do that, make sure snapping is turned on. Okay, now here's where shape layers come into play. So what I can do is on my shape layer, I can go to my effects and presets here, and, and I can just apply the same two things, the blur and the, uh, and the choker. So I'm going to type in a fast blur, and, and this is a legacy effect. I can click and drag it over to my layer, and let's just go with like 40 or something. We're just going to blur it out. Cool, right? Now I'm going to type in the choker and I'm going to go with the matte choker. Put that in and you can see already it's kind of chunked it down. It's constrained it. For the gray level softness, I like to put in maybe something like three and it gives me a nice clean edge. We're going to need this edge when we do the last step. So three is maybe about right. I leave kind of everything else as it is. And of course you can see as we do this, it shrinks the design down, right? Because you start with your design, then we blur it, and then we choke it. So it's going to be smaller than your design. So when you're designing for this, you just want to account for that. And you can always offset it by doing a scale effect on your project afterwards, you know, if you wanted to. So what, what that may look like, if you want to be super technical, is you can hit R for rulers, 
and then with your layer selected with your shape layer you can drag your rulers out and sometimes it just doesn't snap which is always a little annoying to me but you can do it like this and so you can have a precise guide of where your design is and then if you hit S you can scale it up and you can actually get it back to where you want so that's kind of one way that you can overcome the, uh, the scaling down of this effect but um, whatever way you want is fine so we have this now that I've applied the fast blur and the mat choker, you're like, okay, well, what's the deal, right? Well, let's check this out. A shape layer can actually contain groups. So if you twirl it down into where it says contents, you can say eclipse one. If I hit return and rename that and call that bottom, with that selected, I can hit command D now to duplicate it. Hit return and rename that top. Now check this out. With the top selected from the keyboard, I can just move this up and I can see that automatically, I'll hit Command colon to hide the guides. If I hit Command Shift H, it hides all the handles. Just don't forget you did that. Now, this layer has the jelly effect, and maybe you're done, right? You're like, sweet, I'm gonna animate this now. Like, this is awesome. Um, and then what's cool about that, this way of doing it, you can even apply your own colors and do things like that. So I think that is really, really cool. Um, just a, very, a much better way of setting this up. But let's do the stroke, right? So the stroke's a little trickier. So once you build your animation, let's actually just build something out here. So I'm going to undo this. We're going to go back. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to go back here. I'm just hitting Command Z. OK, so that's where it was. Now I'm going to twirl this down where it says top. And you can twirl down that to the transform. I'm going to animate that transform for that specific shape, not the transform on the whole thing, because if I twirl down, there's another transform. I know that's crazy confusing, but basically the shape layers, you have your shape layer, and then there's groups within that, and each group has its own transform, and then the whole layer has a master transform, which is actually freaking awesome, but you just have to keep that in mind. So I have that, and now if I hit U on the keyboard, it just collapses everything and just shows me that one keyframe. Now I'll move my playback head over, and I'll hit Command Shift H again to view the stuff. And oh, you can see I'm actually grabbing the shape. Well, that's not cool. So what I want to do is actually just click the thing here and, um, and just use the keyboard like that. And just keep in mind that you want it when you're working with shape layers, that can happen all the time. Like you think you're grabbing the subgroup, but it's really the whole group. So anyway, that can happen. So now I have this animated, okay? Now, um, once I have this animated, this is how this works, it's kind of cool. Um, with the layer selected, hit Command D to duplicate it. And now in the track mat where it says none, set, the, um, set it to alpha inverted mat. The whole thing's gonna disappear basically. And what that's doing is rather than an alpha mat, it's using everything outside of it. Sounds a little weird, but here's why it's cool. So on the bottom layer, I can now right click and go to my layer styles stroke. Boom, check that out, right? So now I can, sorry, I'm trying to not say boom as much. I've had a lot of people say like, dude, you got to stop saying that. So sorry, <laughs> working on it. Uh, and now you can just, you know, bump it up. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you know, you can change the color. It's totally live. And you have the full transparency. Now if I play this back, you can see that it's actually doing it. And the playback may be kind of funky. You can see it's getting this weird chunky thing when I'm scrolling through it. Don't even worry about that. I'm going to hit Command A, U. Grab both these keyframes, and then you can ease them. Just remember to keep them eased together. And then if you move uh, this around, I like to parent the top layer to the bottom one so that um, if I'm moving th the bottom one, I can move them both together. Otherwise, it starts to break. But this is a really, really cool thing. Um, and I'll just play that back real quick so you can see that, that this is like totally rocking now. And you've just stroked this. It's a live stroke. Um, you're looking through it, you don't need to pre-comp or anything like that. And then you can, with all kinds of shapes, you can just totally rock it. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you had fun with that one. That was really cool. Um, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button because it's awesome. I got more cool stuff coming your way. Um, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next tutorial.